back, you're here with Nate's Weight, and this is Crossbeats Production. So, I gotta say thanks to you guys for uh, staying in tune with my channel and watching it, and also the, the love that I'm getting on the channel. You know, you guys really encourage me to keep doing more of these videos, and it just makes me think, you know, when I was starting to learn how to do production, just learning stuff in general about music, I didn't really have that many people to, to approach and, and people that I could watch and learn from. Um, and I think it's really great that, you know, YouTube now has so many different people, like you've got Craftmaster, and uh, Concrete Zebra, uh, I should say, from Craftmaster Production. You've got other people that, Mr. Different, other people like that, you know, you've got people that, that you can look up to and, and learn from and, you know, just really get knowledge in general. And that's what's great about YouTube and that's what's great about sharing information in general. But anyway, this video is about using reverb before compression or after compression. Now, um, in particular, there's no way right or wrong about this scenario. Um, it's just dependent on taste and it comes down to the track that you're making. And um, in this instance, as you can see, the backdrop is a bit different because I'm actually in my uh, living space and it's too hot outside and I can't do anything out there right now. So I'm producing off a keyboard, Mac computer keyboard and a mouse. That's basically all I've, all I've got and my microphone, which is on the table, which will probably hear noise if I move stuff around too much. But um, I don't have my studio monitors next to me, so I can't really hear exactly what's going on right now. I had head, headphones on before, so that's how I was able to do this um, and make this tutorial. So I took them off obviously to do the tutorial and um, here we are. So. I want to show you guys a tip on how to make your drums sound a bit fuller and it depends on how you want to approach this. There's several different ways to do it. You could make a bus and put your reverb on the bus and your compression on that um, or you can put it directly on the channel which in this instance that's what I've done on this video just for time's sake. I set it up and did it that way um, but the, by all means uh, whatever works for you as you can see, uh, this is working for me. So whatever works for you, choose that method because that's all that really matters when it comes down to music production. What matters is what sounds good. And if it sounds good, that's all you're going for. So on this particular track, what I've got is piano, which I have yet to EQ. Might just relay, relabel that as piano. And we've got our drums here, a drum bus. And that drum kit which I've made came directly from machine so you can see right there I've got the MIDI put in there and I played that into machine and bounced it out as a full kit and here we are on the, the tutorial. So pre um, bouncing this out, actually I might just show you before I uh, close that, I've got a bit of compression and maximization on the drums so it doesn't over, over I guess it doesn't go over the, the threshold it's about minus 0.4 um, on the, the threshold with the drums, but then when I bounce it out, I'm pretty sure Let me just double check Yeah, so we're just kind of somewhere about minus four minus four point six somewhere like that. So anyway Let's get to the reason why I made this tutorial So basically what I've got here is my piano and my drums I'll play this out to you in, in a second and you can hear it as it is and then I'll explain to you the kind of technique I use with reverb and then compression and how I made the drums sound the way they did in that room. So let me just play this quickly and you can hear it for yourself. So that's, as you can see there, we've got all that set up and we're getting some pretty good sound out of that. So what I did with the drums, obviously the piano is pretty straightforward. It's just a four chord structure there that's in the key of D major. And I just messed around with those keys and that's what I got. So if you want to look at the keys, there you go. There's the, the structure right there. So you can mess around with it yourself if you want to. Um, obviously this is a track I'm starting to produce right now. So um, in the end, it'll sound a lot different, probably a lot better. <laughs> who knows but anyway so this is the the beginning of it so what I did with the drums there I put the uh, compressor and reverb in that order on this track and it already had compression and maximization on the drums prior to me bouncing them out so obviously the drums are already somewhat compressed and as you can probably see with the um, the way that the transient is affected obviously there's a bit of compression on there so you can kind of see 
also the the loudness I guess of this uh, open hi-hat anyway so they're slightly compressed um, they're pretty even signal there and the, obviously the drum is the loudest transient within this whole entire um, wave file there and then the snare or the open, I think it's an open yeah it was an open hi-hat um, and a clap kind of thing and then some stuff at the end there just to stand off with the the um, the four bar um, drums there so so what I've done there is obviously just added an extra bit of compression and I've set the mix ratio to 36 percent and I've left the threshold at minus 22 ratio of 2 to 1 and then I've just set an attack at 25.7 and 120 millisecond release it's on adaptive so it kind of adapts to the attack and release times but um, they they kind of suited the way that the track went uh, to be honest, when I set my compressors, I, I usually look at the millisecond delay calculator and I set it according to the, the BPM of my track and, and work around that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes you can set it by year and that kind of worked out fine. I've set the auto uh, gain there. So obviously makeup gain of the compressor. So it increases the volume back up to where it's reduced it from and it puts it back to the, the level that it was at before. And if it isn't, obviously you adjust the gain to be adequately the same and the mix parallel compression is what I've used here and that's at 36% so it's obviously if I was to move this all the way you can hear how crushed the drums are I'll just solo that so the transient on the kick in the snare um, it's really crushed you can hear it and then you move this down to 36 again we'll just put it back at 36 Okay, so they're breathing again, they feel like they're somewhat alive, but with the track combined with the piano, they really sound together meshed really well. So, again, with the reverb and compression, that's the reason why we're doing this tutorial, and that's the reason why I want to show you and basically give you an understanding of where what stands and what goes first. And, you know, by rule of thumb, there is no what goes first and what goes second kind of thing, but um, there definitely is kind of techniques to why you do certain things behind the scenes. So the reason why I set a reverb prior to my compression is so that when I compressed the signal that the imaginary room that these drums are in uh, becomes louder and the reverb sounds more evident within the track. Now if I was going to compress the signal, um, hand signals, <laughs> if I was going to compress the signal um, prior to, to the reverb. I would be compressing the, the transients, I would be affecting the dry signal, and then I would be putting reverb on it. But that reverb wouldn't be being affected by that compression anymore. So it, w it might not bring out the tail of the reverb. Um, it might not bring out the, the, the effect of the, the kick on the reverb. Things like that, that I'm kind of looking for on this particular uh, kit. And the reason why I'm looking for that is because the, the kind of piano that I put on there is like, I guess like a real old school kind of piano sound. And I kind of wanted it to sound like it was that kind of club sound back in the 60s or the 70s. That kind of sound is what I was looking for. So that's the reason why I applied reverb prior to the compressor. And then I set a mix ratio of parallel compression to bring up some of the, the transients, etc. Uh, but not to take away too much of, of the actual signal of the track. And that's why I left it at 36%. So I hope this tutorial helps you understand um, the process behind, you know, why you might apply reverb prior to compression or why you might put it after the compression. Um, there's other things that you might also do, such as EQ. Uh, if you are, say, for example, going to set up a bus, now I'll just set up a bus just for the sake of it to show you what I'm talking about. So say, for example, I drag my reverb here and my compressor here, and I just took these uh, tracks off that and left them on there, and I just labeled this drum bus, or actually I'll just label it verb, and then I'll send my reverb to the bus so say for example i've got this called verb here and send the full ratio there so actually by the way i just want to show you a tip there with this little uh, meter here it obviously tells you the level that you're sending to the actual mix bus so if you're if you don't understand what this is this is doing that's exactly what it's doing if you hit command on your keyboard and then hit the mouse it will set it to to unity gain which means zero as you can see there zero db and that will go straight to zero because uh, normally it's somewhere like I think it's minus 20 or something like no minus maybe it's minus 12 I don't know anyway I set mine to unity and then I mix around with the the amount that I use on the actual mix bus there so you know you could change the amount that you put on there obviously same same thing applies with the keyboard shortcut 
putting command on that, if you hit the mouse, it'll go straight to zero again. So that's a little kind of tip if you want to know about that anyway. Uh, so let me just get those off there and we'll just bring these back up and just pin them to the front of this. I don't want to make this too long, but I just want to show you this quick um, ideal idea here. So uh, the, the way you'd want to kind of work around this is maybe set that to all wet. What that means is all of the signal that goes into this reverb plugin is completely affected. There's no dry signal coming back out of it. And the same could apply to your, your uh, mix on your compressor as well, if you wanted to, for example. Um, say you want to send that all to there. Okay, you're getting a lot of reverb on that then because obviously the signal is coming in it's really hot and there's a lot of reverb and a lot of compression going on there so obviously you just tame this down a bit okay so that's one way of dealing with uh, reverb on a mix bus or you can put it directly on there and just send the mix as it was you know say the mix is 14 percent or whatever it might have been um, and then that way you can kind of do the do the mix yourself through through the channel with the, the mix as parallel compression on the compressor. I mean, it's up to you how you want to work around it. There's, there's many different ways of doing this. I mean, if you're going to use a standard plugin out of Studio One, obviously you can do the same thing, set up the reverb, set that all to dry, um, completely wet, sorry, and um, do the same thing, send your reverb to that and work around that way. So I hope you guys got a little bit out of this tutorial and stay in tune because there's going to be a lot coming up, like I said earlier on in the year. Um, I've just been so busy trying to work around stuff and it's been so hot that I can't really do much at this stage. But I'm going to be doing uh, some definitely good uh, mastering tutorials, also some mixing tutorials, beat making tutorials, and just in general good stuff that we have on this channel. And I, I, like I said, I've got to really thank you guys for tuning in because I really do appreciate it. It's so good to have uh, comments and, and people watching this channel and people tuning in for, for information. And it's just it's just great to share information, you know, in general. I just I just get a lot out of helping other people. It just really, to me, it helps me a lot um, to, to help other people. But anyway, uh, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and peace.